Hello, I'm Derek Crandall, co-chair of the Coalition for Recreational Trails, and we welcome CRT members, our, our honorees, special friends of trails to this 2021 Coalition for Recreational Trails Award Ceremony. I'm joined by my co-chair, Marianne. Yes, let me echo Derek's uh, welcome. Um, we're having a lovely day here in Washington, DC, a touch of summer before winter sets in. I hope that your uh, weather is as beautiful as ours is. And what we all want is beautiful weather when we're out on the trail. So we have an exciting program for you because we have exciting projects that the Recreational Trails Program has funded. And Derek is going to tell us about that. Great, Marianne, thank you. What we'd like to do is talk a little bit about the RTP. Many of you know a lot about its history, but the uh, RTP, uh, legacy begins in 1991, December of 1991, and we began with a marvelous demonstration of unity and vision and championship from members of Congress and key people in the administration, and that continues even uh, in 2021. With all of the other dissonance we have, we have great champions across the country who believe in the power of partnerships and working together to expand trails for all. And here we've shown the, the pictures across the nation of some of our leading champions. Uh, we have key senators and key members of the House of Representatives who are leading the fight to make sure that the RTP original vision back in 1991 is consistent with how the program operates. Now let's go back to 1991. What was it that we, be, that we sought to do? Well, first of all, uh, we want to be an integral part of the surface transportation program of this country, recognizing the importance of trails. And that's why we were so delighted that a bipartisan group of, of members of Congress successfully included the RTP program in the ICE-T Act of 1991. It was a democratically controlled Congress, both the House and the Senate, but it was signed with enthusiasm by the Republican president, George Herbert Walker Bush. And that's been a precedent that's been followed. We now continue to have both Republicans and Democrats, Easterners, Westerners, Southerners, Northerners, all agreeing. A special recognition, I think, to, to the fact that Idaho has been a key part of what we've been up to with Steve Sims leading the way back in, in the, the late uh, 19. Uh, 80s and into the, the ice tea. Since then, uh, we've had consistently bipartisan championship that supports a couple of key RTP elements. The concept is born on, is based on the, the idea that we have uh, millions of dollars every year paid in federal gas tax. And that gas tax goes now to trails rather than being used to fund normal road kinds of projects. Uh, we do have an objective to increase the funding beyond where it now is. The current funding for the RTP program is $84 million, but the Federal Highway Administration issued a report in July of 2021 that estimates that the real contributions of non-highway recreational activities is almost $300 million a year. Now, what that means is that we'll be able to, to significantly expand the way RTP helps trail enthusiasts around the country. We've already been able to, to reach 30,000 projects reflected in our database, but we can do even more. A couple other uh, very key parts of the RTP, it's built around unity. Even though the gas tax is paid in the, the motorized recreational trail activities from its inception, RTP funds trails for everybody. Non-motorized, motorized, winter, summer, 
people riding horses, people even on kayaks and canoes because water trails are included. And it also is a unique program because it emphasizes maintenance. Maintenance is a key part of the trails community and, and we'll hear that in our awards here today. Uh, so we're excited about coming together here today. Although our normal venue is on Capitol Hill involving members of Congress and key FHWA leaders, last year and again this year, COVID has brought us to a virtual award ceremony and we're so delighted to, to be able to be with you here to celebrate 13 wonderful projects. We'll talk more about that, but, but first let's talk about the Coalition for Recreational Trails. Marianne. Yes, I, I think Derek has a rosier memory of uh, 1991 when the Recreational Trails program passed. It was very exciting. We got the program into law, but after the dust settled, we realized we had no funding. It's called being authorized, but not appropriated. And so the Coalition for Recreational Trails was actually founded out of that lack of funding in the bill, the original bill. Uh, and we now have 35 members and we have been very successful in raising that figure from um, zero, where we started to 85 million uh, currently. Although we are not satisfied with how we did in the last, um, our current reauthorization and we plan to do better. Um, anyway, we have a great college with interesting structure. Uh, we have Derek and I are co-chairs, but we are required under our operating procedures to have three vice chairs. Uh, a vice chair that is motorized, that's Duane from Novak. A vice chair non-motorized, that's Charles Cooper, People for Bikes. And a vice chair that represents hybrid or uh, trails that have been host both motorized and non-motorized users or a combination of users. And that's Mary Ellen Springle from the core network. Um, of course, we together we have worked with Congress, worked with other partners to build a program, but we want to give a special nod to uh, some players in this over the last, our partners in this over the last uh, three, uh, three decades without whom we wouldn't be where we are. And first of all, let's talk with uh, former representative Tom Petri of Wisconsin, who for 25 years was simply our, our uh, godfather uh, in the Congress. He took care of this program, he shepherded it, he made sure that uh, it uh, was, was um, always there and always taken care of. And then at FHW, once Congress passes the program, it has to be administered, and from at FHWA, we've had Christopher Dallas from the very beginning. And I think you all know Christopher. What would we have done without Christopher as he guided us through all of these years? Another really significant player in all this, of course, are the state trial administrators because you all run the programs. Uh, and see, the Re Coalition of Recreational Trails has a liaison person always joining our meetings from, from the uh, state trail administrators. That person is currently. Jody Belfu from, from Oregon. And so that keeps that communica communication up. And then of course, there's all of you. you. You are the ones who really bring this program to life, who bring it in the ground and who, and who have made it happen for 30 years now. Wow, so back to you, Derek. Okay, Marianne, well, we're really excited. Let's turn now to what brings us here together. We have 13 wonderful awards to present uh, and we'll be crisscrossing the nation because the, the awards come from coast to coast and all in between. Uh, we're going to make a quick uh, introduction of each of the awards and then hear from the recipients. So let's begin in the state of New Jersey. Uh, our category is Engaging Public Sector Partners. And Corey Tierney, who is the Director of the Land Conservation Department, Warren County, New Jersey. Corey. Hi, thank you, Derek. Uh, I just want to first thank the Coalition for Recreational Trails for having this event. Uh, on behalf of Warren County and all of our partners, um, I'd like to thank you for the award. Um, this really was a great collaboration between public sector partners um, across various levels, including local, state, and, and federal. So I just want to take a moment and um, thank everybody who, um, who helped with this project, including the National Recreational Trails Program, uh, New Jersey Trails Council, New Jersey State Park Service, 
the Warren County Commissioners, the um, Warren County Parks Foundation, um, and also our, our staff here at the uh, Planning, Preservation, and also the Bridge Departments, um, and also all of our volunteers who helped out. Um, it, was a, it was a really interesting project. Um, it really brought the community together. Uh, it's located just outside of Warren County's largest population center, uh, and it connects that population to one of New Jersey's finest state parks, uh, Alamuchi Mountain State Park. Um, it's about 9,000 acres, it's beautiful forest. There's uh, meadows, streams, ponds, and there's about 35 miles of uh, trails you know, within the park. Uh, so it's a popular destination. Um, it's also uh, located at the convergence of three counties in Northwest New Jersey, um, Morris, Sussex and Warren counties. And there's about 750,000 people uh, who reside there. And this park uh, is, uh, really a central hub to some to connecting that population with longer distance uh, trails, including the Sussex Branch Trail, uh, the Highlands Trail, and the Morris Canal Greenway Trail, um, which when completed will stretch over 100 miles from uh, the Delaware River in the west all the way to the Hudson uh, River in the east. So uh, it wasn't without its challenges, uh, but everybody came together, they got the job done, uh, and it's a, a great resource for the community now. So. Uh, thank you again. This means a lot to us. And uh, now I'd like to introduce uh, Congressman Gottheimer. Hi, everyone. My name is Josh Gottheimer. I represent northern New Jersey in the 5th Congressional District, including Warren County. I'm so honored to be here today. While I wish I could be with you in person, it is a wonderful honor for me to be able to congratulate Warren County on receiving the Coalition for Recreational Trails Thomas Petrie Recreational Trails Program Achievement Award. For decades now, the coalition has worked tirelessly to educate and promote the thousands of natural tra trails our great country has to offer. I am so proud that this year, the amazing Waterloo Valley Trail Bridge by Warren County is finally being recognized. The county's cost-effective public-private partnerships to help move work on the bridge forward have proven to be a huge success for our communities. Connecting one of Warren County's largest population centers to one of the state's finest parks it is a model example of how partnerships increase accessibility to some of the most beautiful areas of our great state. Tens of thousands of people in New Jersey and many visiting from outside of the state and across the region will see and benefit from your remarkable efforts. So to all the officials of Warren County and the organizations that work tirelessly to make this happen, thank you. Congratulations on the award. I'm so appreciative of all you do every single day here in the greatest country in the world. God bless you and your families. Thank you, Congressman Gottheimer, uh, virtually. We are now going to zoom across the country, and I, I choose that word deliberately, zoom across the country uh, to the West Coast, to the state of Washington, for the Youth Conservation Service Corps Award, and that goes to the Evans Creek ORV area. And here to accept that award is Todd Schmaltz, the 410, as I understand, that's a, a road, the 410 manager for the Snoqualmie Ranger District. Todd. Hey, good morning from the Pacific Northwest and Western Washington. Thanks for having me today and thanks to the Coalition for Recreational Trails and RTP for this award. I'd also like to thank all of our staff over the years that have shown a tremendous diligence in the challenging task of managing motorized recreational opportunities near a large population center. Uh, I would like to acknowledge our many partners that have given their time and energy and in, in dealing with uh, environmental challenges to continue to make multi-use and motorized recreation a sustainable opportunity in the Western Cascades. Those groups here are Rednecks and Rugrats Jeep Club, the Fringe Motorcycle Club, Washington Off-Highway Vehicle Alliance, and Northwest Motorcycle Association. RTP funding is vital to the rural communities in this area within proximity to the Snoqualmie Ranger District and the Evans Creek ORV Park, as well as the many motorized recreationalists in this Seattle-Tacoma region. Evans Creek ORV Park and Campground is the lone motorized recreational opportunity on federally managed lands on the Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest. It features 25 ma miles of four-wheel drive trails, 21 miles of single-track multi-use trails, and a 41 site campground. I want to thank the Washington State Recreation Conservation Office, Brian Carpenter and Marguerite Austin, our grants managers, and Sabrina Subia 
And lastly, I would like to thank our entire forest in the Snoqualmie Ranger District for their continued support of multi-use and motorized recreation. Well, congratulations to Todd and the team. Really, really excited for what you're doing. Now let's return east. We'll go to Pennsylvania and the category is construction and design. And the, the project that wins this year's award is the Climax Tunnel Rehabilitation. Sandy Mateer is here to accept the award and tell us a little bit about that. She is president of the Red Bank Valley Trails Organization. Sandy. Climax Tunnel is near the midpoint of our 42 mile main trail in Northwest PA. It's a critical connection to our nine mile Sligo Spur and the Erie to Pittsburgh corridor. Climax Tunnel was built in 1876 by the Allegheny Valley Railroad with brick for the ceiling and locally cut stone for walls. The tunnel was in service until 2007 and acquired by Allegheny Valley Land Trust in 2010. Falling bricks and a hole in the ceiling made it unsafe. AVLT worked with RBTA through six phases and five years of grant funded improvements to rehabilitate the now 608 foot historic landmark. Steel liners, gunniting, a buttress wall, extension and asphalt were added through 2018. Assistance was provided by the Clarion County Commissioners, DCNR, PennDOT and others. Increased recreation, fitness use and tourism resulted in opening new B&Bs, bike shops, a gallery, restaurants, and helped existing businesses. Properties improved, sale prices increased, school and fundraising groups regularly use the trail. Red Bank Valley Trail features tunnels, stone arches, bridges, historic markers, and art through remote rural areas and small towns that many now enjoy. Completing the tunnel made that progress, development, and opportunities possible. We thank you for this award. Now our representative, Glenn T. Thompson, will say a few words. Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to be with you today. I am Congressman Glenn G. T. Thompson, and I proudly represent Pennsylvania's 15th Congressional District. Congratulations to the Red Bank Valley Trails Association for being selected to receive the 2021 Thomas Petrie Recreational Trails Program Achievement Award. Now, this award recognizes your hard work and timely completion of the Climax Tunnel Rehabilitation Project. The Red Bank Valley Trail is a community staple in Western Pennsylvania. The completion of this tunnel has greatly improved the accessibility and use of the trail. Having spent more than 30 years in the healthcare field before coming to Congress, I understand the importance of physical activity to maintain a healthy lifestyle. The Red Bank Valley Trail is a great option for residents and visitors alike to explore the great outdoors. Thank you to the Red Bank Valley Trails Association and the Allegheny Valley Land Trust for your dedication to keeping the Red Bank Valley Trail healthy and accessible for years to come. Thank you, Congressman Thompson. Um, we're now going to leave Pennsylvania and head west again, this time to the southwestern part of our country, to Arizona. <clears throat> for the Education and Communication Award. Um, the name of the project is the Sign, is Sign Language Saturday, and it's a very unique award, quite fascinating actually. And here to accept it is Sean Hammond, State Coordinator for the Arizona Site Steward Program with Arizona State Parks in the Historic Preservation Office. Sean. Thank you, Marianne, for that introduction. Uh, hello, recreation advocates and members of CRT. On behalf of Arizona State Parks and our Grants and Trails Program, um, it is an honor to accept this award for our project, which took place at Karshner Cavern State Park. For the project, RTP funding was used to cover costs to pay for sign language interpreters to go on cave tours and translate the stories that rangers and tour guides uh, were providing to visitors. The contract was signed with Arizona Freelance Interpreting Services. Rena Moore was the lead sign language interpreter and you would have just seen her signing to uh, the visitors in many of the photos that you just saw. Uh, Tori Aiken and Lisa Kurtz also led several tours. Altogether, these were the three main interpreters that provided the tours during the project. Early in the project, Karsher staff led by park manager Miguel Estrada came up with a very good idea. They recognized just how important it was for each ranger at the park to lead a sign tour. 
as it provided excellent training on working with folks with all types of abilities. Now, whether it is a geology hike at a national park or in our case, a cave tour, that conversation with the ranger and the visitor means everything. For Karshner, critical safety uh, information must be conveyed on, on the tours. And just as important are the questions from visitors. This exchange between the ranger and the visitor is so important, but often lost if you are deaf or hard of hearing. One critical step we recommend is to develop partnerships with local disability-based organizations. In our case, uh, we reached out to the Arizona Commission for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing and other organizations, including Ability360 for their guidance. Every state in America has wonderful parks and amazing trail systems. However, far too many people miss out on the full experience. That is what makes RTP funds so important. Whether you use the funds to offer trail tours in sign language, like we did, or build accessible trails, with RTP funding, you can make a significant impact on people and their experiences. You know, if anyone has any questions, um, please contact me. I'll gladly provide uh, any info about the project and again, thank you to the CRT members for recognizing this disability-based project. Thank you, Sean. Thanks, and everyone. we know that, uh, that you were, um, <clears throat> was you who first perceived this need and who addressed it. And that's so uh, very, very good, very important of you. And I hope to get to Arizona sometime and you can give me my tour. Uh, so now I'm going to take everybody back east, but not all the way back east. We're going to go as far east as West Virginia uh, for the Enhancement of Federal Lands Award. Uh, and that goes to the Bridge Buttress Trail. And here accepting that uh, award is Robert Fullen, the Crew Program Manager for the Appalachian Mountain Corps. Robert, there you are. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, the Appalachian Conservation Corps is honored to accept this award and to have been able to partner with the Access Fund and the National Park Service to improve the integrity of the climbing platform at Bridge Buttress Trail this year. I want to begin by thanking the Access Fund and Appalachian Conservation Corps crew that worked on the project over a 14-week period this spring. This project brought together so many important priorities, starting with the Access Fund's own mission to keep climbing areas open and conserve the climbing environment. As the nation's newest national park, New River Gorge is seeing a great deal of attention in traffic, making it crucial to strengthen the recreational infrastructure to support this popularity. We at ACC are glad to see West Virginia focus on the use of national service programs like Conservation Corps to complete this necessary work while providing opportunities for youth and young adults to give back to their community and their country. Partnering with the Access Fund and New River Gorge allowed us to do more than just improve climbing access, we were able to further the vision of ACC and conservation legacy as a whole, working toward a world with healthy in lands, air and water, thriving people in resilient communities. Thank you. Robert, thank you so much. We're so excited about what you and your core members were able to do. And that makes us even more excited because we think just over the horizon will be a significant opportunity under the new CC See, proposed by the administration and Congress to do even more of this good work. Now let's head back out west um, and we will be going to the state of Nevada. And we have under the community linkage category, an award to the Prison Hill Recreation Area. We're gonna do this a little bit differently just as trails are not cookie cutter. We're gonna start with a video, but then as the video concludes, We'll hear from Lindsay Boyer, who is the open space manager for the Carson City Parks, Recreation and Open Space Department. So let's see the video. Our huge thank you to the Coalition for Recreational Trails for this award and to the Recreational Trails Program for the grant. RTP grants have funded many valuable projects in our community, and we are so honored to receive recognition for this project. I would also like to thank the numerous city staff who worked on this project, along with our many partners, including the Nevada Conservation Corps, the Boy Scouts, our local nonprofit trail advocacy group, Muscle Powered, and the Nevada State Parks team who administer, administered the RTP grant. 
The Fifth Street Trailhead Trails Project focused on 60 acres of visually disturbed land with over seven miles of old dirt roads and social trails. Many residents told us that they previously avoided the area because of challenging accessibility and some undesirable activities. So as a remedy, we built a centrally located trailhead that is attractive, sustainable, accessible, family friendly, and inclusive. It provides access to over 14 miles of aggregate trails in the Carson River area, several miles of single track on one of our open space properties, and it connects to over 25 miles of paved trails with links to our downtown core. We decommissioned about six miles of old roads and social trails and created 1.6 miles of loop trails that are accessible to adaptive mountain bikes, as well as traditional mountain bikes, hikers, runners, equestrians, seniors, and families. The trail even includes a series of interpretive signs. The trailhead is now a location for local organizations to host trail running and bike riding events, for ranger naturalist programs, and it is used by a nearby middle school to train the cross country team and hold meets. This project truly connects and links our community. All right. Carson City is situated between Lake Tahoe and the Great Basin Desert with boundless opportunities for outdoor recreation. Our city has long recognized the value of trails. We know that trails provide sustainable access to our more than 8,000 acres of city-owned parks and open space properties. Trails encourage an active lifestyle and support both the physical and emotional health of our residents. And we know that trails promote the economic vitality of our community. In 2006, it, we created a United Pathways Master Plan which guides trail development within our community, encourages connectivity with other counties, and assures that our residents will never lose access to our nearby public lands. I would like to personally thank the Recreational Trails Program for their past support of our community, and we look forward to many wonderful projects in the future. Thank you so much. Uh, we are so excited to accept this award. We're so proud of this achievement in our community. As we heard from our city manager and our staff, this project has been just so critical in our community for truly connecting us. Um, this particular trailhead was uh, a bit of a blight in the past and through the generous funding through the Recreational Trails Program and the Coalition for Rec Trails, We've been able to really turn this uh, trailhead around and it has now become one of the most popular trailhead destinations in Carson City. So um, we're just so thankful for this opportunity and for the recognition and uh, we thank you so much. And so with that, I would like to introduce Congressman Mark Amade to say a few words. Hey, Coalition for Recreational Trails people, Prison Hill. Great to be a uh, part of uh, the fact that you guys are getting the Tom Petrie Award for Achievement. The reason that, that it, I was excited to go ahead and participate in this is because about 40 years ago, I was riding a Kawasaki KL250 on the trails on Pr Prison Hill. Um, and I'm sorry to tell you that I haven't been out there since. I sure as heck shouldn't be on a Kawasaki anything 250. Um, but, but anyhow, I think that's great the way this whole area is matriculated from just something that was kind of informal out there years and years ago. Um, you have, uh, have, have hit the nail right on the head in terms of being phenomenally active and bringing this into something that's now multidisciplinary in terms of motorcycles, quads, uh, rock crawling for the Jeep folks and all that other sort of thing, as well as pedestrian stuff and that. So uh, since I live in Carson, I gotta go out there and see what you guys have done um, and I'm looking forward to it, but I just wanted to be part of this to say, hey, add my voice to congratulations, way to go, an example of a win-win with everybody working to do the right thing for responsible multiple use of resources. Congratulations again. So thank you, Congressman. Um, and, you know, I still want to know why it's called Prison Hill. I was wondering, sitting here listening to your, your descriptions, whether it's is it next to Boot Hill or something like that. It's part of the mystique of the West. Uh, and speaking of that mystique, we're going to um, stay in Nevada for the next award. I don't know if we've had an occasion to give two awards in previous years in the same state, but we do this year for sure. Uh, and it's for public private partnerships and access to use of public lands. And it goes to the Griffith Peak Rebuild. 
And here to uh, accept the award, we have Grace Palermo, the Southern Nevada uh, Director for Friends of Nevada Wilderness. Thank you, Mary Ann. We are delighted to be receiving an annual achievement award for use of RTP funds for the Griffith Peak Trail Rebuild Project. Um, we really appreciate this recognition and having received RTP funds, the Recreational Trails Program really supports so much of what we accomplish at Friends of Nevada Wilderness. The Griffith Peak Trail is in Mount Charleston Wilderness and the Spring Mountains National Recreation Area and was devastated by wildfire in 2013. And it really took a Herculean effort to get it cleared of hundreds of downed trees, recut the tread and get it into a sustainable condition so that it could be reopened late last year. Uh, Griffith Peak is a great destination for the millions of Las Vegans who are looking to escape the summer heat and visit Bristlecone Pine Forest. Uh, more than anything else, I really want to say a big huge thank you to the volunteers and everyone else who helped rebuild Griffith Peak Trail. We certainly couldn't have done it without you and nor would we want to. I'm going to pass it off to my colleague Peter Sabracha to say a little bit more. Hi everybody, uh, thank you again for the award. I uh, would like to give some recognition and thanks to all of the partners who've helped make this project a big success for us. Uh, we couldn't have rebuilt Griffith Peak Trail without the help of the equestrian community here in Southern Nevada, including our partners at Cowboy Trail Rides and at Backcountry Horsemen. Um, of course, I'd also like to thank the Spring Mountains Youth Camp who helped build rock steps and other crucial trail features in parts of the trail that needed the most repair where we had a big reroute. Um, and a big thanks to uh, everyone on the Humboldt Tiavi Forest here at the National Forest, or at the Forest Service, um, who we work with. We appreciate all of your help and support. Um, use your office space here too. And uh, rebuilding Griffith Peak Trail was definitely a community effort. We were really glad to uh, have this trail open for everyone again, for hikers, outdoor lovers from Nevada and elsewhere. We get tons of visitors here. Uh, so it's great to have connected the trail system to the Spring Mountains once again, from Kyle Canyon over to Harris Springs. And I'm really excited to introduce Senator Rosen, who's joining over video. And would also like to thank everyone who helped, um, all the volunteers who came up to help us over the years to rebuild the Peak Trail. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Jackie Rosen, and I'm proud to represent our great state of Nevada in the United States Senate. I'm thrilled to hear that the Coalition for Recreational Trails has recognized Friends of Nevada Wilderness and its volunteers for their incredible work on the Griffith Peak Trail Rebuild Project. Due to the hard work and dedication of so many volunteers and local organizations, including Friends of Nevada Wilderness, Spring Mountain Youth Camp, and the Cowboy Trail Rides, the Griffith Peak Trail finally reopened last year after it was damaged by the Carpenter One fire in 2013. Nevada's public lands make up over 80% of our state. They're home to some of our most incredible natural wonders. And our great outdoors brings people from all over to see our mountains, our deserts, our lakes, our stars, and our wildlife. Volunteers, community organizers, and organizations like Friends of Nevada Wilderness are essential to the protection, maintenance, and restoration of Nevada's outdoors. I want to thank the dozens of volunteers, staff, and partners who spent thousands of hours clearing fallen trees and cutting miles of new trail. Because of all of you, stunning views along the Griffith Peak Trail can once again be enjoyed by everyone. Together, we can keep our public lands in public hands so they are open, accessible, and pristine for all Nevadans for generations to come. Well, thank you, Senator, and thank you to all of that partnership in Nevada. We're really proud of what you've done. As you can see, the beauty of the RTP program is the leveraging of federal dollars and into the delivery of wonderful, beneficial trail projects of a variety of different types. Now let's go to the center of the country and in, in Southern Illinois is the recipient of our 2021 Accessibility Enhancement Award. We're looking at the Chautauqua Bottoms Accessibility Upgrades. Unable to join us here today, unfortunately, uh, Green Earth Inc., the nonprofit that manages six key refuges in the Carbondale area, but they send us some information that I think captures the essence of this 
important project. Chautauqua Bottoms is a peaceful, well-maintained 37-acre preserve located in southwest Carbondale. It has multiple use trails open to hikers and runners and bird and wildlife watchers, including those with limited mobility, thanks to an RTP grant. According to Local Land Trust Green Earth Inc., its ADA-friendly trail system of some two miles offers a hard-packed surface, ramped elevated changes, a pedestrian bridge, and five-foot trail width to accommodate wheelchairs passing. Green Earth also manages five other nature preserves, totaling 220 acres in and around Carbondale. The group handles trail repair and improvements, habitat management, and provides educational materials and programs directed towards local school children. The mayor of Carbondale, Mike Henry, wrote, as a rural municipality in the heart of Southern Illinois, nature preservation and outdoor recreation are vital to our community. We are an ADA compliant municipality that values Green Earth Inc. for its commitment to fostering inclusive experiences for all persons. Green Earth Inc. has been an invaluable asset to our city by providing educational and volunteer opportunities, outdoor recreation offers, and enhancing tourism. The city of Carbondale is pleased and confident in supporting Green Earth Inc.'s nomination for the RTP Achievement Award because we recognize the positive impact the organization and its projects have had on our community. Okay, so as you can see, as Derek, and as Derek said, we're now settling into the middle, the core of our country. We're gonna go a little bit north, up to Minnesota for the Construction and Design Award, which goes to the Vermilion Falls Trail. And here to accept that award, we have Bruce Besty and Steve Cox with the Voyager County ATV. Good afternoon. I am Bruce Besty. We are excited to be representing Voyager Country ATV for this award. We are a club established in 2015 and have grown to over 900 members today. We are located in the far most northern part of Minnesota we call Voyager Country. We appreciate the RTP support on this project Combined with other funding, we enhanced a six mile snowmobile link for ATVs connecting the resort community of Crane Lake with the US Forest Service picnic and recreation area at Vermilion Falls, which is a very popular tourist destination. Hello, I'm Steve Cook, trail administrator for Voyager Country ATV. Uh, thanks for having us today. This project includes a 256 foot elevated boardwalk that is awesome. Uh, we installed culverts and gravel to make our trail a sustainable trail. Currently, we have 250 miles of trails and routes. Uh, there's another 75 miles of additional trails that are project ready. We can come up with plenty of ideas, but without funding sources like you, they're just ideas. So thank you again. I also own Mel George's Elephant Lake Lodge and Resort. We are located on 10 miles of gravel road kind of in the middle of nowhere, unless you're on an ATV, side-by-side, -side, snowmobile, or you're a hunter or fisherman. We love the added ATV and side-by-side -side traffic to our seasonal business. The gas sales and burger sales are now rivaling the snowmobilers. And like snowmobilers, they just use our resource. They don't take anything home with them. We look forward to doing more projects with you. Thank you for having us. Now we wish to introduce our Congressman, Representative Pete Stauber. Hello everyone, Congressman Pete Stauber here. In Congress, I have the pleasure of representing Minnesota's 8th District, which is blessed with some of the best and most scenic trails in the world. That's why I am delighted, but not surprised, to hear that the Vermilion Falls Trail Project located in the 8th District has been selected by the Coalition for Recreational Trails as the winner for outstanding use of recreational trails program funds in the small project category of construction and design. This award is all thanks to the Voyager Country ATV Club, a group of dedicated individuals who work hard year round to build trails that are fun to ride and beneficial to the surrounding communities. Outdoor recreation and multiple use of our land is a major part of our way of life here in Northern Minnesota. 
That's why I'm so grateful to the Voyager Country ATV Club, along with leaders like Bruce Bestie and Ron Potter, for their important work in this space. Because of them, future generations of Minnesotans will be able to enjoy incredible pastimes like ATV riding. As a member of the House Natural Resources Committee, ensuring Minnesotans have access to land for recreation remains a top priority of mine as well. And please know that I stand ready to work alongside excellent groups like the Voyager Country ATV Club to ensure continued enjoyment for many years to come. Congratulations again and keep up the excellent work. And we thank you, Congressman. We're so delighted to have these these major forces uh, in governing our country understand the power of communities using RTP and the partnerships that they support. Um, we really appreciate that so much. Let's now move to Colorado. And one of our two awards for maintenance and rehabilitation this year is for the statewide 14ers maintenance project. And we're delighted indeed to have the president of the Colorado 14ers initiative with us to accept the award, Lloyd Athier. Lloyd. Well, thank you so much, Derek. Uh, for 27 years, Colorado 14ers initiative has been preserving and protecting the natural integrity of Colorado's 54 14,000 foot peaks through active stewardship and public education. Our trail work allows more than 400,000 hikers annually to climb these challenging peaks while protecting their rare and fragile alpine ecosystems. Thank you to the Coalition for Recreational Trails for recognizing our work with this prestigious award. A Recreational Trails Program grant was awarded to our maintenance program through a public process run by the Colorado Parks and Wildlife Agency State Trails Program. The grant funded an eight person crew maintaining summit trails on 20 of our 14ers. Our work seasons are short, intense, and occur at extreme altitudes. Work begins at 12,000 feet and often extends to summits over 14,000 feet. Over two seasons, our crews engaged 1,800 volunteers, maintained 64 miles of existing trails, delineated 2.5 miles of new trail, and performed more than 11,000 square feet of vegetation restoration. Working only with natural materials found on the peaks, Crews installed 654 timber steps, 278 rock steps, and built 5,000 square feet of rock retaining walls. Thank you again to the Coalition for Recreational Trails and to the Recreational Trails Program for making this work, work possible, as well as to our staff and volunteers who made everything come together. Now let me introduce Luis Benitez, the former director of Colorado's Outdoor Recreation Industry Office. Luis knows a little bit about mountains himself, having guided climbs around the world, including summiting Mount Everest six times. Hi, my name is Luis Benitez, the former state director for Colorado's Outdoor Recreation Industry Office. I want to say congratulations to the Colorado 14ers Initiative. You know, when it comes to the wealth of recreation opportunities and the active outdoor lifestyle and the outdoor-based economy that the 14ers support, Truly, that is the passionate work that CFI does to protect and make 14ers accessible. 14,000 foot peaks in the United States are one of the most iconic places in the country. And the healthy circular economy that results if we do this work properly is a direct byproduct of what CFI tries to bring to the outdoor industry landscape every single day. So the hiking use monitoring effort projected at 415,000 hiker days in 2020, this was a 44% increase over 2019, largely due to the pandemic. Make no mistake, people have understood for decades that getting outside is good for you. And the 14ers are a place really where that resonates across Colorado and across the country. But our work is just beginning. CFI's latest 14er report card shows a backlog of need for reconstructed routes of over $18 million. And this is just for 14 or summit trails. So it takes all sorts of partners to make this happen. But congratulations to CFI for being the stewards for one of the most iconic pieces of our nation's outdoor recreation industry. Wow, what, what 
uh, what an extraordinary project, what extraordinary scenery, what a beautiful country we have in all of its geographic diversity. Uh, we're off to Michigan now uh, for the Multi-Use Management Corridor Sharing Award, which goes to the Doty Bridge replacement. And here to accept that award, we have Paul Gabberdale, the Upper UP Peninsula. Remember, Michigan has that little peninsula up there at the top. Upper uh, East UP Trail Specialist uh, with Parks and Recreation with Michigan DNR. Paul. It's an honor to accept this award for the state of Michigan and be recognized by the Coalition of Recreation Trails for the award and recognizing the importance of the project. Again, well, thank you. The Doty Bridge is a multi-use trail or bridge on the Colwood Trail in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan near Munise. The rail trail is maintained by as uh, Snowmobile Trail 8 and Route C for the ORV use. It's a vital link for economy to many communities from Sault Ste. Marie in the east across the Upper Peninsula to Ironwood in the west for motorized use. Um, it took many cooperators to make this project happen, which I would like to thank. To name a few um, would be the land manager, Hiawatha National Forest, uh, maintenance grant sponsor, the Snowmobile and Off-Road Vehicle Association of Alger County, the statewide organization, Michigan Snowmobile and Off-Road Vehicle Association, uh, project oversight was through the local agency programs by Michigan Department of Transportation. Uh, engineering was provided by OHM advisors and Jim Duke for some application. We couldn't have completed the project without all the cooperators. And the Recreation Trail Program funding grants made it possible to complete this project. And the users thank you for keeping this important community link open. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Congressman Jack Bergman to say a few words about the project. Hey, thanks Paul. And, and thank all of you uh, for the opportunity to join you uh, virtually today. Wish we could do this in person. I'll keep my comments brief, but wanted to use the opportunity to thank everyone who had a part in the Doty Bridge Project and congratulate you on receiving the Annual Achievement Award for Outstanding Use of Recreational Trails Program Funds. Across the first district, the folks like you in Alger County that continue to set the standard on what it means to be good stewards of the resources we are so blessed to have. We know that those of us who use the land will work hard to preserve and protect usability of these resources for future generations. I'm proud to have had the opportunity to support this project on the front end, and I'm looking forward to getting there in person sometime soon, hopefully by sled shortly after the snow starts to fly in here in enough quantity. So congratulations on receiving this much deserved award following the completion of this project. And by the way, don't hesitate to reach out to our office in the future and please continue the great work you all are doing. Thank you so much for being with you, you know, all being together today. Thank you, Congressman, and thank you for joining us live uh, for this awards program. It's been a pleasure seeing you and hearing from you. And yes, indeed, we will be in touch with your, your office. Uh, so our final project award uh, takes us to the far west coast. Our most western award that we have is it's in Oregon. Uh, the Niakani Mountain to Manzanita, Manzanita Trail gets the award for maintenance and rehabilitation. And for their acceptance, their mayors, Mike Scott, the mayor of Manzanita, and other partners have recorded a video. Hi, I'm Mike Scott, and I'm here to accept the award today from the Coalition of Recreational Trails on behalf of the city of Manzanita. And I wanna thank the Recreational Trails Program for the grant we received, which made this project possible and I also want to thank local resident Connie Sober, who ramrodded this project to its completion over a number of years. And I'd like to also acknowledge that we've had four landowners along the trail 
that gave us public access so that we could build a trail on their property. And I'd like to acknowledge them. It was Oregon State Parks, Oregon State Department of Transportation, the Lower Nehalem Community Trust, and also one private homeowner. And we also had Trail Keepers of Oregon uh, build the trail for us and are going to continue to maintain it. So the city of Manzanita is uh, real excited and pleased to be one of the communities on the coast that's helping fill in the gaps on the Oregon Coast Trail. Thank you. I'm Jody Balfi, RTP Grant Coordinator for the state of Oregon. On behalf of Oregon State Parks, congratulations to the city of Manzanita and their partners on this well-deserved award. We're especially excited to recognize this project in 2021 as we're also celebrating the 50th anniversary of our State Recreation Trail System Act. And the Oregon Coast Trail was one of the first trails designated by our department as an official state recreation trail in 1975. But it was acknowledged that this and other gaps along the trail still needed to be filled. So now we can celebrate that OCT through hikers and the local community has a safe route to hike between Manzanita and the Akani Mountain. Congratulations. I'm Connie Soper. As a hiker, trail advocate, and frequent visitor to the Oregon coast, I'm excited to have been a part of this project from its vision to its completion. This segment of the Oregon Coast Trail links two previously unconnected segments that had previously been walked along the shoulder of a busy highway. As a result, safe, hiker safety is greatly improved and hikers are directed into the city of Manzanita. The Oregon Coast Trail traverses the entire scenic coastline of the state of Oregon, taking advantage of its public beaches, also uh, traveling through state parks and many coastal communities. Hikers bring with them a low impact tourism and other economic benefits. Efforts are currently underway to address uh, additional gaps in the Oregon Coast Trail, hopefully with the use of future RTP funds. Finally, we'd like to acknowledge the contribution of the Northwest Youth Corps, who uh, contributed a lot of the work for the trail. Uh, hello, my name is Sharon Rose Hoquin from Los Angeles, California. Um, what this project has done for me is I think taught me how to be more stronger, persevering, and just like getting faster at the work we've done. I've learned a lot more about making trail and like building it and like drain work and the actual like effects it has sometimes if a trail isn't made properly. So this is Mary Ann. Um, Senator Merkley was not able to be with us today, but he sent a letter of congratulations and greetings, which I will read. And, and I think I will always remember this day. It's the day that I played Senator Merkley on screen live. But the Senator says to us this afternoon, greetings. I am thrilled to join you in congratulating the city of Manzanita for receiving an award of excellence from the Coalition for Recreational Trails. The Neocomi Mountain, Manzanita Trail plays a major role in Oregon's tourist culture, linking together beaches, bridges, parks, and various coastal communities. The Oregon Coast Trail is a showcase of our stunning landscape, giving longtime Oregonians new perspective on our treasured coast and drawing tourists. While the trail spans 380 miles of coastland between the Washington and California borders, it remains incomplete, causing safety issues for its users. Completing this project not only resolves key safety concerns, but enhances the fantastic hiking experience the Oregon Coast Trail provides. The city of Manzanita deserves recognition for its strong commitment to completing this project and its leadership in partnering with public and private stakeholders to achieve progress. Construction efforts led by the Trail Keepers of Oregon and Northwest Youth Corps were critical, and I applaud their dedication to getting this project across the finish line. Thank you to the Coalition for Recreational Trails for recognizing the Neoconi Mountain Manzanita Trail Project and the City of Manzanita for its prestigious award. The Coalition for Recreational Trails is vital to the stability of our public lands and with your continued partnership and advocacy for the Recreational Trails Program, we can sustain enjoyable hiking experiences across the country for years to come. Sincerely, Jeffrey A. Merkley, United States Senator. And thank you, Senator Merkley. That's so great. You know, to 
to hear U.S. senators and mayors and trail enthusiasts and everybody coming together to talk, to talk about how this is a partnership effort. Uh, we're so proud of the 12 projects that we have recognized so far today. We have one more important recognition to offer, and we'll explain this by saying that you know, the uh, Coalition for Recreational Trails appreciates the genius of putting together the RTP program and the federal involvement of the Federal Highway Administration, the state highway agencies, and in many cases, the state trails program in the park office that, that actually makes the grants and coordinates the efforts. Each year, we work with the National Association of State Park Directors to invite recognition of exemplary state projects, whether they are for the entire state trail program or for the required state trail advisory committee that all of the states must have in order to qualify for RTP funding. We're delighted that NASPD has recommended and CRT has accepted the uh, award for outstanding state trail program to go to the state of Maryland today uh, and hear to talk about the program and to accept the award is Cheryl Ladotta, who is the State Recreational Trails Program Manager for the Maryland State Highway Administration. Congratulations, Cheryl. Thank you for all you're doing and tell us about your program. Thank you to the Coalition of Recreational Trails and the NASPD Committee for bestowing upon the Maryland State Highway Administration such an honor with this special award. Particularly with Maryland's program being one of the few that is run by a state Department of Transportation, rather than a state natural resource agency. I also would like to thank our project sponsors, supporters and partners who are too many to list, but without whom none of this would be possible. The Maryland recreational trails program is so proud of the work we do both stewarding these crucial federal funds as well as providing fantastic trail facilities throughout Maryland. Since program inception, we have awarded over 1,000 projects with a $25 million federal investment matched with a $9.5 million local investment. Over the years, the program has helped sponsors build and restore hundreds, if not thousands, of miles of trails in communities as varied as densely populated suburban Baltimore and Washington rural mountainous Western Maryland, and our bucolic Eastern Shore. This work supports access to all who want to recreate, whether it's a special trip seeking out Maryland's forests, beaches, rivers, and lakes, or just getting outside in their own backyards. Maryland is special. It may be small geographically, but it offers such an array of experiences, which has resulted in a wide variety of project types and locations. From adding solar lighting to a 900 foot long tunnel on the Great Allegheny Passage, to resurfacing hunter access roads in our state forests, to building new trail systems to allow greater opportunities to explore our state parks. From providing water access to navigate the historic Captain John Smith Chesapeake National Water Trail, to viewing the wild horses at Assateague Island, to walking in the footsteps of Harriet Tubman. Our team at Maryland Department of Transportation State Highway Administration has worked and will continue to work every day with our project sponsors to create and maintain exceptional recreational experiences for all who live in and visit our great state. Thank you. Congratulations to Cheryl. Congratulations to all of our winners here today. I am just amazed that we were able to stay even close to being on time, squeezing in all of the good in an hour. I mean, we could easily have run a week-long seminar focusing all of the accomplishments of RTP. Well, we want to close by, by just talking a little bit about um, where you can go for additional information, how you can contact our winners and more. Uh, and, and let's begin. Marianne, jump in anytime you want. But uh, you know, we have a, a database that has profile information on 30,000 plus 
projects that had been funded by RTP and support from volunteers and states and, and nonprofits and everything else. Wonderful, wonderful information um, available and sources of, of engineering and other kinds of data that you can work on. Um, Marianne, anything you want to add about the, the database? And, uh, and yeah. well, not only do we, it, it's an incredible um, display of the types of projects that have been funded, but it's sortable. You can sort it by state, so you know what's happened in your state. You can also sort it by congressional district, uh, which means that when you're uh, speaking to a member of Congress on behalf of the Red Trails program, you can very specifically show what has been funded in that member's district or in that senator's state. And so that's a really an important feature of this, of the database. And we're able to have a database because from the very beginning, and this goes partially to the wisdom of Mr. Petri, uh, they understood that it takes money to effectively administer a program. And so there is a 1% set aside uh, that is uh, in the law that there'll be 1% set aside for the Federal Highway Administration to administer this program. And so we're able to do things like have this database. But I wanna bring on screen now, we have to thank our, our awards committee, our chair, Dwayne Taylor, yay, Dwayne. And our, uh, shall we say, assistant to the chair, <laughs> who's really good with databases. <laughs> and so he keeps track of all of these awards. But, Mike Passo, Executive Director of American Trails. And Dwayne, of course, you met earlier in his, his uh, uh, role as a, a Vice Chair of the Coalition for Recreational Trails and the Executive Director of NOVAC. So do you guys want to say anything about uh, uh, what the applications look like this year? What was the field? How is this going? What do you look forward to next year? Yeah, sure. Um, first, congratulations to the winners. I can tell everybody who won an award, they beat an outstanding field because all of the nominees who came in this year were just incredible. And they made the, the work difficult for Mike, myself, and Peter Stockis from the AMA, who also uh, was part of the awards committee. And uh, it, nobody should be envious of us because the, the nominations were so incredible. It just took a lot of effort and time to separate out who we thought the best were. But uh, we're, we're proud of the winners, but we're as proud as the other nominees because they're really making it difficult year after year. Um, a big shout out to Mike Passo, who really led the charge this year um, and, and did tremendous work. So Mike, you got anything? Yeah, I agree. I just want to echo the the award slate or the nomination slate was just amazing this year. We had over, almost 50 great projects. And I just want to let everybody know, you know, the ones that didn't make it, you had great projects as well. And we're planning to highlight as featured projects throughout the year on our website, on the Facebook page, and as well as in the annual report, which will come out uh, later in the year. So thanks, everybody, for nominations. Be sure to go to the website for CRT, which is www.rectrails.org, and you can find more information on the, the great projects that you heard about today and find uh, additional information about how we're going to succeed in not only continuing the RTP program, but expanding it so that, in fact, all of this great energy for trails out there from coast to coast is, is now going to be backed with additional funding. So we're so pleased, so proud. Thank all of the CRT members for your, your united efforts to be advocates for a great program. We'll continue to work with our bipartisan champions in Congress and in the state capitals. Look forward to, to being with you again for the next award program in 2022. Marianne, how should we close it? Uh a quick thank you to our RT's Rails to Trails Conservancy's Communications Department team that put this program on. All we had to do was sit here and look pretty uh, and talk a little bit and pretend and be uh, a senator. Uh, uh, and also, we it's been interesting having to do these two years uh, virtually. We very much hope that by next year we're able to be back on Capitol Hill with an in-person event and that the, everybody that got an award in these two years where we weren't together will come and join us. But we also know we've learned so much about the value of virtual presentations that we'll probably do some sort of hybrid. So stay tuned for next year's award ceremony, or, no, or you can tune out for the year, but next year be back with us 
for next year's for the uh, next year's award ceremony, uh, and get your next generation of project applications lined up because Dwayne and Mike are just waiting to get their hands on them. Thank you all for being here. And Marianne, I think we'll announce one other reward. Anyone who visits all 13 of our award winners today in the next six months gets a special award from CRT. So just let us know if you go out to visit each one of these, these award-winning projects. No, I think we should make that a year. Let's give people a year. A little more okay. okay. All right. I think that we're getting the cue to say, see ya. <laughs> and then see ya. Thank you. We thank you all.